Over the past few hundred years, Earth has been demoted from its former position as the center of the cosmos. We now know that we are probably merely one of the trillions of planets in the Milky Way galaxy. And one of the smaller ones at that, in an era of rapid scientific discovery, finding unequivocal evidence of active life on a planet outside of our solar system is the ultimate objective of NASA's exoplanet mission. Here comes Albert Einstein who says, not so fast. Time beats faster on the moon than it does on the Earth. It has recently been discovered that our nearest star neighbor supports life. By any standard, our neighboring solar system is peculiar. How does NASA look for extraterrestrial life? How do we know that there is life elsewhere in the universe? And what new discovery by NASA actually proves this theory? Let's find out. For life, as we know it, to exist, highly certain circumstances must be met. In fact, many scientists think that similar circumstances could support life outside of our planet's atmosphere. These could be extremely basic organisms like bacteria, or even more sophisticated life forms like plants and animals. All living organisms require food of some kind, water, and the proper environment and temperature. For instance, humans require oxygen to survive and can endure temperatures that are neither too hot nor cold. Even the force of gravity affects how our bodies look, including how strong our muscles and bones are. Life would differ somewhat on other worlds because they don't have exactly the same environmental conditions as Earth. For instance, these locations might have a different atmosphere, which would mean that there wouldn't be enough oxygen for humans to breathe. Since all life on Earth has evolved to our environment, all life needs our particular combination of atmospheric gases. The way of life there would be specially tailored to their needs. The kind of life we currently have on Earth depends heavily on water. Water is a necessity for both plants and animals to survive. Because there is so much liquid water on Earth, it is a highly unique planet. Although there are a lot of new exoplanets being discovered orbiting other stars, we haven't yet found one with as much liquid water as there is on Earth. Since more than 20 years ago, the quest for exoplanets, planets orbiting stars other than our Sun, has been a flourishing area of astronomy. Astronomers have found thousands of worlds in a wide range of sizes and orbit around a wide variety of stars using ground-based observatories as well as space telescopes like NASA's Planet Hunting Kepler project, and they are poised to find tens to hundreds of thousands more in the years to come. Recently, NASA reported the finding of a brand new planet the size of Earth in the habitable region of the star Toy 700. Although 2I700e is just over 100 light years distant from Earth and is therefore too remote for people to travel there, we do know that it is around the same size as Earth, likely contains solid materials, and may harbor life. Planets that are just the correct distance from their star and have a surface temperature that may support liquid water are said to be habitable planets. While it is always wonderful to discover a brand new, distant planet that may be habitable, Exoplanet research is moving away from just finding additional planets. Instead, scientists are concentrating their efforts on locating and analyzing systems that are most likely to provide important insights into the formation, evolution, and possibility of life in the cosmos. Unlike many of these previous planet findings, Tohai 700e is well equipped for further research that could assist in resolving important problems regarding the circumstances of life outside the solar system. In 1995, astronomers found the first exoplanet orbiting a star similar to the Sun. Since then, the study and discovery of exoplanets have advanced quickly. At first, astronomers discovered only a few exoplanets annually, but with the advent of new state-of-the-art equipment dedicated to exoplanet science and increased detection sensitivity, astronomers are now finding hundreds of exoplanets annually. The amount of knowledge scientists may gain about these worlds has expanded as detection techniques and equipment have advanced. With the use of tools like the James Webb Space Telescope, scientists have advanced from hardly being able to detect exoplanets to describing important chemical hints in their atmospheres, such as water. More than 5,000 exoplanets are currently known, ranging from large gas giants to small rocky planets. The most intriguing discovery, though, is that astronomers have discovered approximately a dozen exoplanets that are likely rocky and orbit their respective stars in habitable zones. A few systems, like TOI 700, have many planets circling in the star's habitable zone, according to some discoveries made by astronomers. 
Our term for these is Keystone Systems. With the discovery of this planet, 2I700 is now one of the very few known systems with two planets the size of Earth orbiting in the star's habitable zone. One of the easiest systems to characterize in the future because of how close it is to Earth is this system. Astronomers may now begin analyzing the atmospheric chemistry of exoplanets and looking for signs of life on them thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope. A number of large ground-based telescopes will soon contribute to the discovery of additional information regarding the makeup of planets outside the solar system. The only available data in the quest for life is from Earth. Although it's feasible that life on other planets could differ greatly from our own, for the time being, locations with liquid water on the surface that are similar to Earth provide a decent spot to start looking. The finest use of observational time is made by cornerstone systems which have planets that are potential contenders for harboring life. The possibilities of finding life in the cosmos increase as astronomers learn more about how star systems and our own solar system function. One important point, however, is still unanswered. How far away is Earth Proxima, the nearest planet, relative to the billions of potentially livable, potentially Earth-like planets that statistics suggest should exist in the Milky Way? By any standard, our neighboring solar system is peculiar. Alpha Centauri A, which is around 10% more massive and 50% more bright than our Sun, and Alpha Centauri B, which is the exact opposite, and is 10% less massive and 50% dimmer, make up the triple system. The third star in the system, Proxima Centauri, is a weak red dwarf, M star, that is situated 0.2 light years away from the other two stars, yet orbits a common center of gravity with them. Even though they are peculiar, we are particularly interested in these stars since they are the nearest of the estimated 100 billion in our galaxy. The closest of the three to Earth is Proxima Centauri, which is located 4.2 light-years away. It has two verified planets, one of which is in the habitable zone, which is the distance from a star at which you can anticipate temperatures on the surface of a planet that are consistent with the occurrence of liquid water. It is thought that the other two stars in the system have planets. A potential Neptune-sized planet was suggested to be orbiting Alpha Centauri A in 2021 at a distance similar to that of Earth's orbit around the Sun, although this could just be a dust cloud. The probability of terrestrial planets is increased, at least theoretically, by the apparent absence of any brown dwarfs or gas giants close to Alpha Centauri A and B. Therefore, there may be as many as 75% of rocky, potentially livable planets in our neighboring solar system. All of this elevates the Alpha Centauri system to the top of everyone's list of potential extraterrestrial life search locations. To that end, the Toleman Space Telescope mission, which aims to find more planets in the Alpha Centauri system that may be habitable, has received early funding from the Breakthrough Foundation. The design, construction, and integration of a spaceship with the telescope are all parts of the project's current Phase 2, which has no set launch date. Does Alpha Centauri contain life or not? Regarding the planet we have already discovered, Proxima b was the center of attention when it was discovered in 2016 due to its size, at least 17% more mass than Earth, and, significantly, its location in the habitable zone. However, it alone does not provide us with sufficient data to determine whether the planet is indeed habitable. Proxima b may be tidally locked, which means it always faces the same side of its M-dwarf sun because of how closely it orbits it, because one side would continue to be scalding hot and the other freezing cold, which is bad for life. It has been suggested that life would still be able to exist on such a globe because the regions at the hemispheric boundaries may have hospitable temperatures. Proxima Centauri, like other red dwarfs, releases potent solar flares and X-ray emissions that would be difficult for any life forms to survive on a planet that is 20 times closer to its star than Earth is to the Sun. Proxima b may have a magnetic field, but we are unsure if it provides protection. We also don't know if water exists there. A healthy biosphere requires both of those conditions, as well as the availability of organic molecules and the presence of a reliable mechanism for recycling nutrients, such as plate tectonics. In other words, a world cannot support life just by being in the habitable zone. Even though our moon is in a zone where life is possible, it is utterly desolate. And even though Europa and Enceladus are well outside the habitable zone of the sun, it's possible that life exists in their underground oceans. How about the planet the size of Neptune that orbits Alpha Centauri A? 
Its magnitude suggests, if it is ultimately confirmed, that it might be more like the inhospitable gas giants of our own solar system. The majority of scientists place the separation between rocky and gaseous planets between 1.5 and 3 Earth masses. It is likely a gas giant since the globe surrounding Alpha Centauri A looks to be between 5 and 7 times the mass of Earth. However, we are unsure of the maximum mass that rocky planets can reach. That would be a different scenario if the planet is made mostly of rocky material. The consequences of a so-called super-Earth in Alpha Centauri's habitable zone could be fascinating. This kind of planet may be teeming with life if it were in an orbit similar to Mars, around 1.5 Sun-Earth distances from the Sun. Mars is currently only marginally livable because it is too tiny and has insufficient internal energy to have retained its original magnetosphere and atmosphere. Mars would have been far more appropriate for life if it had been the size of Earth or even larger. This is because it is highly likely to have retained its original oceans and dense atmosphere. There isn't a rocky planet in our solar system that is more massive than Earth, but we might find one in the Alpha Centauri system. Sadly, we might have to travel there to find out. A new government report is raising eyebrows across the country, especially among anyone interested in extraterrestrials. But it might not be as impossible as it first seemed. In fewer than five years, a new type of propulsion system that could hypothetically take a sizable scientific payload into interstellar space has just been proposed. But we need to be practical. There is a very, very long way to go. 4.2 light years, even with a propulsion breakthrough, it is necessary to be patient. But imagine sending out a probe to investigate the Centauri system. Scientists are investigating some rather strange places in their quest to find extraterrestrial life. According to a recent study, some exoplanets that circle red dwarfs may be able to sustain life in the region that is close to twilight between the planet's day side and night side. The discovery might broaden the search for terraforming planets throughout the cosmos. Habitable planets won't necessarily be habitable everywhere on their surface, but rather could have habitable regions, said Anna Lobo, a postdoctoral scholar at the University of California, Irvine. Most stars in the Milky Way are red dwarf or M dwarf stars, which account for roughly 70% of all stars. They have a closer habitable zone than stars like the Sun, because they are smaller and fainter than the Sun. It generated a lot of enthusiasm about the possibility that it could support life when the Webb telescope discovered its first rocky Earth-like exoplanet revolving around a red dwarf star in January. Exoplanets in the habitable zones of M dwarf stars frequently rotate at the same rate as their host stars due to strong gravitational forces. The phenomenon known as tidal locking results in these planets having a constant day side the side facing the star, and night side, the side away from the star. Both the daytime and nighttime temperatures are unsuitable for life as we know it. The terminator zone, a sharp break between light and dark, may nevertheless be just the correct temperature for water to flow, a requirement for life as we know it. For the purpose of simulating circumstances on Earth-like exoplanets around M dwarf stars, Lobo and her colleagues employed a global climate model. They adjusted rotation rates and the distances between planets and their stars as they studied both planets with oceans and planets with little or no water. The researchers used the model to demonstrate for the first time that terminators may support life on planets with little water, but not ocean worlds. According to the researchers, a habitable terminator requires a clear difference between daytime and nighttime temperatures. This research aids astronomers and astrobiologists in their search for extraterrestrial life. Water-rich planets don't have this feature because heat is readily transferred from one side to the other of their atmospheres, resulting in a more uniform climate and, at best, a negligible difference in daytime and nighttime temperatures. On these ocean-covered worlds, incoming solar radiation heats the water on the day side, converting it to water vapor, a greenhouse gas. The entire planet becomes too hot for life as a result of a runaway greenhouse effect caused by a thick layer of water vapor that traps heat. The atmospheres of planets with little water, on the other hand, are less efficient in transferring heat, favoring a moderate climate at the terminator. Perfect temperature lies somewhere between too hot and too chilly.
It is fundamentally valuable to know what might or might not be different between Earth and other types of livable worlds as mankind tries to comprehend its place in the cosmos. This research aids astronomers and astrobiologists in their search for extraterrestrial life. Making greater use of telescope time requires scientists to know where to look for life. Scientists are getting ever closer to describing the atmospheres of exoplanets thanks to the JWST's increasingly sophisticated measurements. Thanks for watching another episode. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.